Hello, everyone. My name is Becca Riddle, and this is Court Street Christian Church. I'm so glad that you could join us this week. If you live in the Salem area, you know that we have been devastated by an ice storm this week, and we were knocked out of electricity, and a lot of our beloved trees fell down. My house was included in the devastation. We woke up at 2 a.m. on Friday morning to a tree crashing into our bedroom as we slept, and I am telling you, I have never felt so alive. We woke up to that sound, and it was horrific to see a limb of a tree in our bedroom. Don't worry. We're, we're in a hotel. We're safe and sound. Repairs are being made. But I know that this has affected a lot of you. So if you're in the Salem area and this ice storm has affected your home life, I, I, I want to hear from you. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to see if there's something practical we could do for you. But please feel free to reach out to the church. This has been an absolute uh, devastation to our city. So we're so excited that things are starting to get back um, together again. Power is being turned on. Looks like kids will be going to school next week. But man, we need each other right now. So reach out if you um, are in need of some prayer, some support right now. Listen, this service, we are finishing up our sermon series, Start Close In. Josh has got a fantastic message for you. And uh, next week, we are going to be celebrating, celebrating what this message has done for you in your life and some of the things that it has done in even our own lives. We are collecting pictures, stories, just some testimonies of some different ways that these messages have affected you. If you've missed one of these messages um, in this series, take this opportunity to go back and even listen to them because they have been powerful things that have challenged me on what to do when I don't know what step to take next in my spiritual walk, in my walk with relationships, in my walk with how to do church right now. This has answered so many questions for me on where to just start going in life, to start close in. So if you have a testimony on how that has affected you, we'd love to hear it. Also, at the end of this service, Pastor Josh is going to lead us in communion. So this would be a great time to pause the video or to quickly just go and gather some elements, some juice, some crackers. It doesn't have to be anything specific, but we are going to be just celebrating together that connection that we have with God. Anything that just represents his lifeblood that he gave to us, his body that was broken for us. Gather those things up, and then at the end of the message, Josh is going to lead us in communion. All right, church, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to worship. We've had such a week where we've had to be flexible. A lot of us have been cold. A lot of us have been without connection with the outside world. And I am just needing to hear the beautiful music that just celebrates God's goodness. So let's do that together, and then we'll listen to a powerful message from Pastor Josh. Darkness, you 
rose in glorious light, forever seated high. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again for I believe in the name of Jesus and I believe in you and I believe you rose again and I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe. I believe in the life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. And I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe
Good morning, church. Good morning, friends joining us online. My name is Josh, and I'm one of the pastors here at Court Street. I'm really excited to be here with one of my favorite things. Who knows what I'm holding here? You know what I'm holding? That's right. <laughs> I have some Legos with me, and I'm going to give you permission to do something really fun. The first time ever, you're going to have a pastor invite you to play with Legos during the sermon. Okay, so you probably have a box of these or maybe a tub of these somewhere around your house. So I'm going to invite you real quick to pause me. Just put me on pause and go get a box of Legos, get them out and start building something creative while you're listening to this sermon. The reason I want you to do that is because, well, we're going to use this as an illustration and I want to see what cool thing you come up with. So uh, take a picture of whatever you create after this sermon and uh, will you email that to me or have your parents maybe take a picture of it and email it to me? I'd love to see what you create from these Legos. So I'm going to give a real awkward pose here. Pause right there. Go get your Legos, all right? <laughs> all right. You got your Legos? Good. Get your Legos ready and um, feel free to build something during this sermon. I'm going to invite you to do that. And while, while you're starting, I just want to tell you a story about my week. You know, we talked earlier about how we've been through a crazy week this week here in Salem with our ice storm. And for us and my family, what that meant was we lost our power for, well, at the time of this sermon, I'm still without power. It's been over six days that I've been without power, and it's made life pretty difficult. One of the ways it's made life really a challenge for us is that our cell phones work only when our internet service is working. You know, it connects through the Wi-Fi and helps our internet serve or our cell phone service be able to make good connections. So this week, we have had a lot of trouble sending out texts, making phone calls, that kind of thing. In fact, one time I was coming out of my neighborhood and suddenly my phone just exploded with a, a bunch of texts and a, and a bunch of missed calls of people that were trying to make connections with me. It's made life difficult in order to connect with others. Now, you might think, that sounds pretty nice to me, uh, a week of not having my phone ring off the hook or having people bother me. I don't know what it feels like to you, but it definitely has made life a little bit challenging in connecting with others. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about what it means to start close in. That's the sermon series that we've been in. But start close in when, when it relates to connecting with others. All right, to introduce this idea of connecting, I've brought with me some great connecting toys, some Legos. Do you have yours there? And I want to ask you a question about Legos. A really cool thing that I learned this week is how many different ways two Legos can connect. All right, now don't Google it. Don't look it up right now. But maybe in the comments section, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, just tell me how many ways do you think, if you just have two Legos, how many different ways they can connect, all right? Take, take your guess. What about, what if you just added one more? What if you had three Legos like I have here? How many ways would that work, you know? I wonder what that is. You can put your guess there. Or I wonder if you have twice this many Legos, six Legos. How many different ways do you think just six Legos could connect? All right, do you have your guesses? Well, here's the big reveal, okay? If you have two Two Legos, just two. They say that you have 24 different possibilities. Now, you know, as I stack them on there, I'm thinking of every possible way that two Legos can combine. We're talking about just a two by, two by four Lego here, a simple eight peg Lego. 24 possibilities. Now, what if you add just one more? If you add a third, do you believe that you can have, look how many possibilities there are, 1,060 <laughs> that is absolutely amazing to me. Uh, all those different connections just from three Legos. And before I tell you the number for the last one, I'll tell you this. The original first uh, guy who created Legos estimated that if you had six different Legos that you could uh, connect them over a million times. That was absolutely amazing. But then there was this guy. His name is uh, Soren Eilers. He's a, a Danish professor of mathematics. He actually was at Legoland one day with his daughter not too long ago, and he decided he would create a program for his computer to compute how many different ways just six 
two by four Legos could connect. And would you believe he came up with this number right here, the computer program. Look at this, over 915 million different ways of connecting. I tell you what, that is absolutely amazing to think about, isn't it? I don't know what your guesses were in uh, how many of those connections. But the reason I bring that up is because we're going to be talking about uh, connections as it relates to you know, our connections with each other. And if you've been in church for any length of time, you've probably heard a sermon on community or you've heard this sermon about connecting and, or maybe a sermon about small groups, something like that. And you think, oh man, I know what this is going to be all about. This is going to be about the pastor asking me to you know, make sure that I have some relationships with others. But I really want to look at this in the same vein that we've been talking about the last few weeks, which is to start close in. Not to look at this huge, you know, grand thing out there, maybe something that we don't have control over, but to look at it in a way that we actually can affect ourselves right now during this very unique time, the unique time that we're in where we're maybe not able to connect with each other like we're used to or like we did a year ago. Now, let me ask you this. Where do you relate on this personality scale of introvert to extrovert? Okay, I've brought this with me here today to think about where do you line up on this? Now, what is an extrovert? Well, the experts tell us that an extrovert is a person who receives really a lot of energy or gets life from just being around people. They love to have relationships with others and they love to have a lot of them. In fact, it just gets them charged up and ready to go, you know? Or maybe you're more on an introvert, that's the opposite side of that, where you receive energy and you get charged up from actually not being around people or maybe just being around a few people. Um, and you like to have your space or your alone time, something like that. You'd be more introverted. Now, most of us, if we're honest, we probably fall somewhere in between introvert and extrovert, don't we? I know I fall almost right in the middle, although I do lean a little bit more introverted. And I bring that up and I tell you this, that... No matter where you're at on this scale of introvert or extrovert, there's something about us that really God designed us inside of us. It's a desire to have meaningful connections with others, even if we're an introvert, even if we're an extrovert, but something that has something that's deep and meaningful in a, in a way that um, really brings us closer to God and closer to others. And there's something even, the deeper part is this. And I brought some words with me today that we like to talk about when we talk about relationships at Court Street. You've heard us talk about these before. And it's this way. We desire inside of us a relationship that has significance, where we feel significance. Or another way of saying that is we feel needed or I feel needed. It really fills us up in a deep part inside. Another thing that we're looking for, another S, is, is satisfaction in relationships. We have this desire to feel content, to content within, within the relationship that we're in. And then the last one is, is security. This is another thing that we are looking for within relationships, and that's the, um, the feeling of, of safety. You know, where you can be vulnerable with another person, where you can be honest with them and not feel Judge. In fact, you feel in a safe place to be in that relationship. Now, often we see these words as uh, finite. This is a word that uh, you know means scarce or that there's not quite enough of them. I think back to my family when I was growing up. I grew up in a big family, and come meal time, you know, when <laughs> when mom laid out the meal, we would often jump in there, and if it was like something that we really enjoyed, like. We all enjoyed cheese for some reason, you know. And if there were some slices of cheese out there, we would go and grab as many as we could because we knew there probably wasn't going to be seconds, you know. And maybe you re we relate to relationships this way where we feel like there's not enough significance. There's really not enough satisfaction. There's not enough security out there. And so we view those things as uh, something that is scarce or something that there's not enough of. But today in the scripture, we're going to look at a story where God leads the disciples in this, in kind of a new way of thinking. And the way of thinking is that all of these things that God has for us within relationships with each other and relationships um, with him, with God, that there's more than enough. Hmm. That there, this is actually, uh, there's a, 
there's lots of this. God has, has more than enough. It's a deep well. It can never run dry. There's an abundance of satisfaction. There's an abundance of significance and security. You know, one other thing real quick is that you really can't have the fullness of these feelings alone. God's design is for us to have those in relationship with each other, in connection with one another and in connection with God. In fact, the fruit, the fruit of connection is all of these things. And that's the, that's the beautiful thing. So I promised you we'd look at a story in Scripture that illustrates these things. So let's go there. It's in Matthew chapter 18. And I, I love this Scripture, especially as we think about it in the light of what God is inviting us to in our connections with each other and our connections with God. Let me tell you that Matthew 18 is often called Jesus' Sermon on Community. And today we're going to read it through a, a certain lens. And the lens is that Jesus is calling his disciples to a new kind of kingdom. He's gathered all of these different disciples, kind of like different Legos, right? God has gathered all of these 12 disciples. They come from different backgrounds. Uh, they have different things to offer. But God's going to build something new with these disciples. And he's going to treat, he's going to teach them a new way of thinking and a new way of living as someone that would, as people that would be a follower of, of Christ and that would be the beginnings of something called the church. So Matthew 18, verse 1, we find the disciples. They've traveled through a place called Capernaum and they're having a discussion. It's actually a discussion that has happened more than once in their journeys. You can find it. I found it three different times in the Gospels this week where the disciples are kind of having a discussion or an argument about who is going to be the best? Who's going to be the greatest? And let's look at it. 18 verse 1 says, At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? You see, Jesus has been teaching about this, this idea, this kingdom of heaven, or it's sometimes referred to as the kingdom of God in Scripture. And when the disciples hear that, they interpret it through the lens of what they understand. They understand earthly kingdoms. And they know that in earthly kingdoms, what really matters is your position. It matters where you're at in the chain of command. What really matters is how much influence you have and how much power that you have over others. And here uh, is this uh, common thing that the disciples would kind of come back to. You know, the 12 of them jostling for position. And you know, if you have the same understanding as the disciples of the kingdoms of this earth as it relates to the kingdom of heaven. You know that in the kingdoms that we have even today are often about competition, a competition to get to the top. But what Jesus is about to invite the disciples into is that he says that, you know, to have real meaningful connection with each other, we have to trade something for something else. And connection happens when we trade. The first thing is competition for teamwork. Competition for teamwork. You know, often when I was uh, growing up in the church, I, I heard this passage taught in the way that almost like, well, what Jesus is saying is there's like a new rule to follow, right? And the rule is instead, the way to the top is not to try to climb the ladder, but to get to the bottom as fast as you can. Like, you know, and we'll look at this in a little bit, but it wasn't this idea of competing for humility. Have you ever been around a person like that that just thinks that, boy, okay, I'm just going to put on this kind of false humility so that I can look good to others. That's not what Jesus was saying. He was saying that there is actually something that is traded for the idea of um, worldly kingdom or a kingdom of this world that you would climb to the top by competing. But Jesus says you take on a mindset of what I'm calling is teamwork. And <laughs> not the most humble award, but who can uh, be a part, realize that we're all on the same team. One of the things that we compete for as people is we, and as Christians, is we have this idea that God's love maybe is is uh, somehow scarce, you know. So we're competing for the love of God. We're competing for that uh, by either climbing the ladder or maybe by trying to be as humble as we can. But it's not about competition. Rather, it's about um, 
it is about really teamwork and seeing each other that we are all, there's enough of God's love for all of us. There's enough of God's love for all of the world. It's not something that we have to compete for. It's something that we are all on the same team moving toward. So what does this mean when it relates to our lives and starting close in and connecting with others? You know, I think about uh, in my life, often I'm tempted to see my life as competing for uh, whatever it is, whether it be like number one in, you know, God's eyes or number one in, in my work or number one in, in uh, you know, the way that I live. God's asking me to start close in, not to look for something that I can't control, but look for something in that I can control that's close in. And so I want you to think of a Lego right now, okay? And this is the start close in question is this. What is my unique shape? <laughs> That might make you chuckle a little bit. But I wonder, as you think about your connections with other people, rather than competing, what if you saw yourself as a teammate with others? And what is it unique about you that God has given you? Maybe it's a gifting. Maybe it's a personality trait. I don't know what it is about you that really brings to the table something really unique and lovely to a connection with another, another relationship. This is what I want you to think about because God is building something beautiful with us. All of us are these different pieces and we all have a unique shape. We all have something unique to bring to the table. Now, I want to get to the next point real quick because Jesus is telling his disciples, he hears them arguing about who's going to be the greatest and he uses this illustration. It's a beautiful illustration. It's in Matthew 18, 2 through 5. Jesus calls a little child to him. And he placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. You know, I wonder, what was the significance of the child? Was it that it was this innocent little child, like a sweet face, uh, seemingly like an, an angel that Jesus brought there in the midst? Well, to the disciples, they understood Jesus' significance of bringing this child right to the center. Jesus was talking about, really, their position in the culture. You know, a child at that time was kind of the lowliest person in the culture. They didn't have any influence. They didn't have any power. They didn't have any wealth to bring. And Jesus was saying that, you know what? If you come into the kingdom of God, to have a real connection with others, you have to be willing to trade comparison for contentment. And that's the second point there that Jesus is bringing to his disciples, that connection happens when we trade our comparison for contentment. I don't know what comparison looks like in your life. Maybe it's a, a lifestyle of, of someone else that seems better. Maybe this person is in your family, or maybe it's a neighbor, or maybe it's a friend, and you're just kind of like always comparing yourself to that, never feeling like you're really measuring up. And honestly, that becomes a barrier to real connection with that person. Maybe it's something in your career, or maybe, like I said, it's something, someone in your family that you're close to but you're you compare yourself and it hinders a real uh, connection that brings those things that we talked about of significance and satisfaction and security and so I want to invite you to start close in in this idea of comparison or contentment and ask yourself this question what do I already have that I can build on what do I already have that I can build on. So uh, this is what I mean. I mean, look at your life and look at the connections, the relationships that you have that are already there. And rather than wanting or, or comparing yourself and thinking, boy, I wish I could have that connection or I wish I could have that relationship, start close in and invite yourself to look at what are the things that I already have? What are the connections that I can begin to build on? Here's how that's playing out in my life. So my daughter, Emma, uh, she got a a frog recently, a pet frog. And this, this is a picture of, of Yaddle the frog. And I tell you what, 
I have really come to fall in love with this little frog. She'll tell you. Like, I'll, I'll go into her room where she keeps a frog. I just like to, like to watch what Yaddle's doing. She's kind of intriguing to me. Um, the way she can just leap across her cage and the way she can attack a cricket. Well, Emma was trying to learn about, you know, how to take care of this frog. And so she joined a Facebook group um, for White's Tree Frogs. And she told me it's, Dad, it's mainly old ladies. <laughs> and so she joins this group and she takes pictures of Yaddle and posts them to there. And she actually re- received a Facebook badge as, a, as a, a poster of a lot of pictures of Yaddle. It's really neat to hear how she's connecting with others out of this, you know, just this simple love for a, for a tree frog. Another way that it's happening in my life, I'll show you, this is a daily call that happens in my life. (laughs) This right here is my brother Andrew. Andrew uh, has a condition known as Down syndrome, but he calls me on FaceTime every day from his iPad. So you see me down in their corner, and most of the time this is my view of Andrew, (laughs) this really up close and personal view. But I've told him, you know, because of the time difference, he lives out east, I told him, you can't call me until after lunch. So every day, Almost on the dot, he calls me at 12.30, which is 9.30 my time, and he tells me what he's had for lunch. You know what? To be be honest, like I didn't have very many conversations with my brother Andrew until the pandemic hit. But now I would say I'm probably closest to my brother Andrew than I am to anybody in my family as far as people that I talk to daily in my life. That's what I'm inviting you to do, is to think about what are the connections that you have that are close in? What do you have already? that you can begin to build on. What those connections will give you life. They really will. The last scripture I'd like to look at is from Matthew 18. And Jesus is continuing this discussion with the disciples. And it's found here in 15 verses 19. Or verses 15 through 19. It says this. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed on heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. And this is a key verse that's quoted a lot. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Now there's a lot going on in this passage. Um, A lot of times people will talk about this in terms of like what they call church discipline. But remember, we're looking at this through the lens of Jesus' call of of love in the new kingdom and calling us into community with others, calling us into connection with others that brings satisfaction and security. So when we read it that way, um, I think about the two main things here. We find conflict and we find a heart for resolution and restoration. Boy, what is it like when we're in conflict? Think about that for a minute. When you're in conflict with another person, uh, another relationship in your life, what, it, what often is your feeling? I don't know about you, but for me, I feel like a sense of, of fight within me to prove that I'm right, you know, to be justified in my feelings or to be justified even in my actions toward that other person. But what Jesus is inviting the disciples to do here is not to fight. Jesus is inviting them to actually reach beyond that for connection, for connection. And you know what? Here's what he's inviting them to do. Connection happens when we trade conflict for unity. Conflict for unity. I don't know if you're a parent, but let me just speak to the parents for a minute. I, <laughs> don't you hate it when your kids come to you with a conflict and they want you to be the judge and the jury to determine who did what and why they did it and who's right and who's wrong? It's not a fun place to be, quite frankly. It, for me, it's a, it's a challenging place. It's a place that brings some frustration. You know what I like better? I really like when my kids come to me and they're in unity. <laughs> when they're getting along, when they're playing together nicely and they're treating each other with respect and love. And here's the thing. I, I think that this passage reflects the heart of God. 
God's not necessarily giving some new rules for who's going to be right and who's going to be wrong. God's telling us that God's heart is for restoration and for peace and for unity. So when I think about what it means for me to start close in, I want to ask this question. When I think about looking for unity, start close in by asking, am I open to new possibilities from God? Man, think about the connections that you have in your life. Maybe the ones that are maybe in conflict or maybe the ones that you don't even know, really. And are you open to growing in your own uh, life toward those connections in a way that brings restoration? This past week, we had the big storm, of course. And uh, I'll be honest, I don't really know many of my neighbors very well. I know the people on either side of me, and I know a few that I wave to, but What the storm did, actually, in my community was something really unique. So what happened in our our yard was we had this this big tree out front that lost quite a few limbs and fell down on our driveway. And I went to get my chainsaw on Monday and to try to fire it up, but you know what? It wasn't working. And I knew that I wouldn't be able to get it fixed. So I was sitting there at my dining room table wondering what to do next. When I walked by the front door, I saw there were some, some young people out front and they're just standing there kind of awkwardly. And I thought, well, oh man, this, you know what this is? This is probably some, some people that are coming by to market something to me. They're trying to sell me something. So I just, you know how you do. You just open the door slowly and kind of suspiciously, like, can I help you? And they said, hey, we live up the street from you. And we we're wondering if we could just help you clean up your tree. I said, are you kidding me? Of course, I would love that. And so I said, let me get my shoes. I'm coming out to help you. So I went out there and we worked for a good hour. And before you know it, like all of the tree was cleaned up, stacked neatly there right beside the sidewalk. I couldn't believe it. It was such help, such a big help. So I asked them, I said, hey, are you guys going to keep doing this? And they said, yeah, we're going to go over to the next neighbor's house and we're going to keep cleaning up his tree. Do you know him? And I said, yeah, I know. I know my neighbor and let's go over there. I want to help you. I want to, I want to pay it forward, you know, and, and do something good. So we all went over there and we worked for another hour and cleaned up my neighbor's tree that was even bigger than mine. And I I asked him at the end, I said, hey, would you guys mind if I took a picture of you? And so here's my neighbors. This is Connor and Abby and Brogan. And I just, I don't know, I told them, I said, you guys have restored my faith in the goodness of people, Um, especially, you know, the people that live around me, that you would be willing to do this. It was, they were open to something new, doing something that would help other people. And that's what I'm talking about, you know, that God invites us to look around us to see what are the possibilities that God is bringing that would be uh, really draw us into relationship, into connection with others in a meaningful way. You may feel a little bit frustrated right now if you're an extrovert thinking, man, I'd love to be at church just greeting people like I used to in the lobby, shaking as many hands as possible. Or maybe if you're an introvert, you're like, you know, usually when I come to church, I just sneak in the door and and try to find my seat as quick as possible. (laughs) But wherever you're at on that spectrum, you know, it it can really frustrate us to think about trying to, to... affect those things that we have no control. So what we're inviting you to do is to think about close, start close in. What are those things that God is inviting you into that, are, that you can make a difference? Maybe it's like me. Maybe it's just some neighbors close by that you can connect with and do something good in your community and know that God will build something really cool in your life. So God's act is like these Legos, We started with Legos and we're going to end here. Uh, God is creating something beautiful from all of us as individuals. It's like we're all a a different, unique Lego. We all have our unique shape. We all have different ways that we connect. God's inviting us to build something new that will bring us the things that we talked about, that will bring us the significance, that feeling of feeling needed, that will bring us satisfaction to our life, that contentedness, and will bring security the, the safety. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about different things that you can build with Legos. Let's just look at a couple pictures just for fun here at the end. All right. This is a pretty cool pirate ship. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you've built something really neat. Here's, here's, a, here's an airplane. I mean, I can't even tell that's a Lego. And this next one's really cool. Look at this car. Man, 
like a, a vintage muscle car. It looks like a Mustang. I'd love to have that. Can you believe that it's made from Legos? You know what? And I really think about this in relation to our church and the connections in your life. God is building something really beautiful, something really unique with the way that we are connecting. And we can start close in. We can start close in. Beginning of the service, we invited you to get some elements for communion. And uh, the illustration that we have that really illustrates God's love for us most is what we were called to remember. And that is uh, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us. And so here at the end of our service, I just want to invite you to take those elements. I'm going to read from the scripture here. And as we celebrate communion together, Communion, uh, you know, thinking about just the connection, the very word, communing with God and connecting with another, one another. Let's connect uh, with each other in this way as we partake in communion. This is the words from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 where Paul says, is remembering what Jesus did for the world. And he says, the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Wherever you're at today, as you take this bread and you break it in your hands, remember the body of Jesus broken for you. Let's eat in remembrance of him. And then in the same way, the scripture says, After supper, he took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so in the same way, we remember God's wonderful gift of Jesus Christ to us. And so as you take your cup of juice and you drink, we drink in remembrance of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that you joined us today. And as you end our service with communion, I just want to say a quick prayer over you and during this time. God, we're so grateful for the connection that you gave first to us through Jesus Christ, this desire to connect with us in a real me- meaningful way. And I pray that today's service will be a real encouragement to us to connect with others in a similar way that brings us uh, significance and security and satisfaction real in our relationships. Pray that your encouragement would be over all those uh, today as they seek this pursuit. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, church. See you next week.